Of you, ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate it, and uh, and I shall call you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, simply because I have not had time to learn all your names. And uh, but, ladies and gentlemen, it co covers it; it really does. And uh, I, I prefer to call you by your names. That would be more personal and uh, in every way, but it would take a long time. Uh, but you know, the thing about I, I realize my name, by the way, is Ellen, and. Uh, <laughs> stage manager here, Jonathan, uh, the first day we met, Jonathan uh, decided to call me L right away. Uh, just, just, just narrowed it down right away to L. Didn't have the time for the whole name. And, uh, and part of that charmed me, and, uh, and part of it annoyed me. And because um, I felt like he was rushing me. I wasn't there yet for that relationship to start. You know, these people that, that get cozy with you all of a sudden, and L is, is you know, it's, it's Ellen. And it's fine. I like it now. And some people call me Elle, and, and I, I don't. But I'm, I'm kind of more formal. I still call my mother Mrs. DeGeneres. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't like to rush into things like that. But now, in shortening a name is different than a nickname. And a lot of people give people nicknames, like immediately. You, any, any doctor immediately is reduced to doc. You know, you call, here's 12 years of medical school, and they become one of the uh, seven dwarves all of a sudden. <laughs> um, <laughs> That doesn't seem fair. I can become three of the, uh, the seven dwarves just if I go to bed too late. I'm uh, immediately grumpy, sleepy, and dopey. And, um, but no one calls me that. But, um, you know, and that's the thing about nicknames, too, is all of a sudden, once you have a nickname, if it, if it sticks for long enough, no one remembers your real name. It's just, oh, who, what, I don't know. What's the real name? Because seven dwarves, people forget all the real names. Because now they're just known as sleepy, grumpy, dopey, Tito, Jermaine. <laughs> But, um, but you, you forget the real names. Uh, originally, the Seven Dwarves were, of course, the real names. Uh, Percy, uh, Lance, Earl, uh, Harold, uh, Felix, and Puff Daddy. And uh, originally. The nicknames, though, you earn nicknames, don't you? Sometimes, you know, you, you all of a sudden, you can kind of tell the personality of somebody if somebody says, I'm going to go over to uh, Lampshade Heads, over, you know? <laughs> you know who that is right away. Or if it's, it, it's interesting if you go to, like, an office party. It's like a Christmas party. You go with your spouse, and you're all of a sudden like, hey, how come everybody calls you Mr. Friendly Hands? <laughs> give themselves nicknames, you know, when you meet them. My name's Jim, but everybody calls me Moondog. Like, no, thanks. Sometimes be, they're meant to be funny. It's a little sense of humor. You know, somebody is a tall guy and his nickname is Shorty, or, you know, a bald guy and his name is Curly, you know, or a millionaire and his name is 50 Cent, something like that, you know. Uh, gotten so informal. Everything has changed, you know? It's like there used to be the days when you would ask permission if you could call someone their first name. You would always immediately call them their last name, and then you would say, like, you know, Miss Ciccone, do you mind if I call you Madonna? Or something like that, instead of, <laughs> like, or Mr. Manson, do you mind if I call you Marilyn? You know? <laughs> it was never assumed that you just could. We had, uh, last week on the show, Janet was on the show, and uh, I said, should I call you Janet? And she said, uh, Miss Jackson, if you're nasty. <laughs> and, uh, I said, all right, Miss Jackson, say hello to Mr. Openbow or Tony if you're that.
<laughs> that was fun. I, that, was, that was the first time uh, I was over in that area. Yeah. <laughs> that was great. I liked it. <laughs> I like moving around. I was over there, then I was over there. I'm going to dance with the rest of you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Tony, what happened with that? Didn't you run this past weekend? Yeah, I, I ran the uh, day before yesterday on Sunday. Uh, you, what'd, you, what'd you do? I ran for the Nike uh, Go. They have this thing called Nike Go, which benefits uh, kids getting outside into the fresh air, playing around, and uh, I won a medal. Look at you! <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. I have to say, um, I did three miles and I didn't stop once. I ran, and uh, some, uh, considering I don't run, but uh, they gave everyone these, so it doesn't, oh. <laughs> it doesn't look that good. Wow, <laughs> that's great. Was a was a bird chasing you? <laughs> that might as well have been. You could I be running faster. Was like, <laughs> yeah. I'd have broke a world record yeah. if there was a bird there. All right. <laughs> But well, it was fun. Good for you. Yeah. So you got a medal for running three miles, and I, I got a tiara just for dancing. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> Talking of which, uh, I, I was running with your tiara partner, Emily Proctor. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, so good. She, How, so she ran the whole thing, too? She was trying to wear her tiara, but I think it kept coming off as we ran. Yeah. <laughs> so. She loves wearing a tiara, that Emily. <laughs> yeah, she does. All right. All right. Well, good for you. Well, that's great you did that in a good cause. Thank you. Okay, so now we, we have a new segment. I'm very excited about this. We started it yesterday, and, uh, and it continues today. That's how well it's doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's called How Come You're Not on TV? So uh, here's what we're trying. We're trying to find uh, people with unique talent, you know, like some kind of unique gift. We're not looking for the next American Idol, no. We're looking for that special talent that's never seen the light of day. Any age, any, any talent, keep in mind, we don't want anything gross, we don't want anything dangerous. And uh, so now we have received a letter, and this guy didn't even know we were going to start the segment. He just was inviting himself on the show. Um, <laughs> eight years old, this little boy. Hello, Ellen. I watch you on television when you are dancing. My name is Austin, and I love music. I play drums, and I was wondering if I could be a guest on your show. Which, by the way, is how we book our, all of our guests. This is... <laughs> you should see Tom Cruise's letter. It's adorable. Um, uh, it would be cool if you were dancing, and I'll be playing drums. I play a variety of songs like Wipeout, ACDC, Beatles, Beach Boys, Def Leppard. Uh, watch my tape, and you could see and hear me play. Hope to hear from you soon, Ellen. Uh, your friend, Austin, Austin Garant, or Garant from Fall River, Massachusetts. And uh, take a look at this little eight-year-old playing drums. to dance to, Austin. Uh, I don't have to dry my hair next time. I could just wash it and come out and just dance to Wipeout is what I can do. Well, that is, that's cute, in, in, unless you live next door to Austin. Um, <laughs> Shut up! Um, I always think it would be adorable to have a kid that knew how to uh, play drums, but until you have to listen to him rehearse. But um, he's, he's adorable. And uh, so, so far, we've only shown kids, uh, but the segment is open to people of all ages. So uh, check our website, and you can uh, get details on how to send us your tapes to be, uh, to be on TV. Um, all right, another, another segment that has taken off like crazy, uh, Big Fat Animals. You are so beautiful. Do 
Dear Ellen, <laughs> I wanted to send you a picture of my kitty. This is Simon. He weighs 30 pounds. Oh. <laughs> I know you requested pictures of fat cats. However, Simon is not really fat. He's just very big boned. <laughs> I think he's a Norwegian forest cat. Simon loves to go for walks on his leash, but I don't take him out very often because when I do, crowds gather around him. People insist on saying rude things such as, oh my God, what is that? <laughs> or, or why is he so big? I wouldn't say rude things about their children, so I'm not sure why people think it's okay to point at my cat and say rude things. It hurts his feelings. Anyway, he is adorable, friendly, and very sweet. He would love to have his picture on your show. Just don't say he's fat. He's sensitive about that. <laughs> Sincerely, Beth Yanni uh, from uh, Chicago, Illinois. Um, well, first of all, you send in a cat to a segment we call Big Fat Animals. <laughs> so uh, I guess what we should do is, uh, you know, big boned is just really another word for fat, but whatever. <laughs> Um, but, and it's good that it has big bones, because he's fat, he needs that support. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I guess we could add big bone, because some animals aren't fat, they're big bones, so I guess we should change the name of the segment to, uh, big fat animals slash big boned animals. So that's the new name for the, the, here it is. You are so And these are pictures of uh, my fat cat, Gordo Gatto. She's from Miami, and she's 14 years old. Please let me know what day she'll be on the show. Thank you, Risa Conley, Miami, Florida. Um, well, it looks like they use her for some type of a uh, feline swiffer or something like that. <laughs> uh, oh, by the way, Risa, she's, she'll be on the show today. All right. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Ellen, I love your show and watch it every day. Thought you might like to see some fat raccoons. Uh, Bandit and Dakota are, were very small orphans when I got them, about eight ounces each. They're about six months old at the time of these photos. Bandit topped out at 21 pounds. Um, as you can see, they enjoy uh, Kool-Aid and Fruit Loops, among most uh, other kinds of food. Uh, they both had a lot of baby fat to live off until they learned to take care of themselves in the wild once released. Enjoy Joanne Van Camp from Farmington, Michigan. Um, well, that's great. That is fantastic that you're taking care of the animals and then just releasing them because that's important to... to <laughs> she's obviously teaching them how to wrestle when they... Uh, that's the half Nelson that she's teaching them right there. <laughs> once they get a hold of their attacker. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I used to want a raccoon when I was a little girl. They, they seem really, really cute. And then there's another picture, I think, of the Fruit Loop she was talking about, which is, of course, the natural food they... <laughs> in the wild, they have to open the box themselves. <laughs> which is how they get their fiber. Um, but that's, uh... <laughs> that's just acid reflux waiting to happen. Just, uh... <laughs> fruit Loops and Kool-Aid for the raccoons. And I don't think that's technically considered fat. If you can touch your toes, I don't think that that's fat. <laughs> you know? All right. All right, this is uh, Chester from Janet Stewart from Lugoff, Lugoff South Carolina. Um, although this picture is two and a half years old, Chester still sits on the chair. <laughs> And this position, he still has his boyish figure at 14. That's a... You know the good thing about cats? Just, just zoom in if you can right here. I just want you to take a look. Zoom in. The, the fur really hides the stretch marks. <laughs> How are you? Good, you look cute. 
I'm yeah. on holiday. You're on holiday. Yeah, I don't have any socks and I'm sorry. I like it. I wish I, I've said it before. I like the way it looks without socks, but I, my feet get too sweaty. I can't wear the no sock thing. <laughs> How can you do it? I, uh, I just deal with the sweatiness. Oh. <laughs> yeah. How come? Um. Because it looks better? Well, I've also, I've got a, I've got a bit oh, of a cut what happened? on the back. Oh, uh, It's a surfing thing. You can't, he's got a huge gash on the back of his foot. Like, from, it hit rocks? No, uh, it was a scrape, and then I kept surfing, and it sort of ulcerated. So what oh. happens if it's, if, it's, if it's wet all the time? It yes. never gets to heal. I know that much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh... It's fine. It's absolutely clean. It's all right. Just, uh... No, but the sweaty thing, because I'm, I'm curious, and, and also, this is what I know about you, too. Look how much I know about you. Um... <laughs> You don't, you, and you smell delicious, by the way. Um, and you, yes. But he doesn't use deodorant, right? That's right. How yeah. come? Um, because, you know, I think uh, we smell good as people. <laughs> Not, we, we all don't. No, we um, all don't. I, I think oh, we... You know, if I'm, you know... I, I, if... We know some people who don't. Right. Um, I'll, I'll wear deodorant if I'm a little on the nose. On the nose, what's that mean? If little, you're stinky? A little whiffy. Well, well, then it's too late. It's like, you just carry deodorant with you, like, in your pocket, and have to put it on if you're on the nose? No, no, what I literally do is I go, honey, I said to my wife, if you got some deodorant. On her? Yeah. Did you have some deodorant anywhere? And she carries it in her purse? Well, no, you know, there may be some in the car or there may be some... You're you know... making this entire thing up. Yeah, I am. <laughs> Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> what but, are you doing? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kind of winging it. Um, but I use deodorant, but I, 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 you know, okay, I was just curious. Oh, no, you know, I, 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 I don't like the idea of rubbing stuff under your arm. The feeling of doing that is gross to me. Mm hmm But if I am a little on the nose, what I'll What if you put dab it? it? I... <laughs> No? Yeah. Nothing under your arm? No. Don't like it? I don't like it. No. All right. Well, you smell fine, like Thanks. I said. There's no reason to. I'm not, I'm not saying you should. This is not a hint. We didn't all... This is not some intervention. We brought you here. I, you know, I wish I'd never, ever said that I yeah. don't wear deodorant when it's <laughs> in the press somewhere. Well, see, and that's what happens. It comes yeah. back to haunt you. But and, uh, the whole thing started because I like the way it looks without socks, but I can't do it. That's cute. All right, so... Um, I've kind of got your look going today, don't I? Like I yeah, I like it. That's why I like it, maybe, because you look like me. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's a little tennis shoe, and it's very comfy and good little cords, very soft cords. Soft fabric. Mm -hmm. Nice fabric. All right. So, um, uh, so uh, mate, um, <laughs> you're from Australia? Yeah. 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 And so, right. uh, do, you, do they do nicknames? <clears throat> do you have a nickname in Australia? Very, very, you know, a lot of nicknames in Australia. Everyone has a nickname within seconds. Really? Yeah. It's big there. Big, big. And so, what's your nickname? Um, my nickname was Smiley. Smiley. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. And uh, how come? Um... <laughs> or maybe they were calling you Smelly. <laughs> no. You know, with the accent. It's, with the accent, maybe it's hard to tell what they're calling you. <laughs> Hello, Smiley. The, the only problem is, I had a friend in the same little group whose nickname was Smelly. So it would have been a little odd. Right. But his name was Shane Kelly, and people called him Smelly. Oh, that's just because it rhymed. It was an unfortunate one. But yeah. mine, mine came from, uh, I was in under 10s football, playing fo rugby league, and at training once, a guy called Josh Black whose nickname was Poodles. Um, well, it sounds like a tough league y'all were in. Yeah. Um, well, that was short for... Look out for Poodles and Smiley! <laughs> pretty much that was pretty much what happened. That was pretty much what it was like on a Saturday morning playing yeah. for the Seagulls. Okay. The Seagulls, that yeah, was the, the name of the, the team? The Mighty Seagulls. Uh-huh. Oh, well, then it was... <laughs> Is it, are you talking about rugby? Rugby league, yeah. Isn't that supposed to be really rough? Yeah, it is. Okay, so you and Poodles are on the... <laughs> Poodles is going to be famous now. Somewhere yeah. in some pub in yeah. Australia is going to be like, mate, they were talking about you on the Ellen yeah, show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poodles! That was Come short. Here. It was short, actually, for Rapoodly. Rapoodly? Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. yeah. So when you were mad, you called him Rapoodly. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, you call him Joshua. Yeah. Joshua reputedly black. Uh -huh. He's an animal. <laughs> okay, so and then and then how come you got smiley? Uh, I mean, just, uh, you know, because you have a good smile. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. you do have a good smile. But, oh, so do you. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have to. But take... she does. Yeah. No, I mean, really, you I, do. I was watching the thing in the change room, mm -hmm. and I thought, wow, she's got a bit of a stunning smile. Oh. Yeah. We have to go to commercial. <laughs> we'll be right back. We're back with Simon Baker from the CBS show, The Guardian. And, uh, and if you don't know, he was wearing the cutest outfit ever. I just love this outfit. I don't know why. And I, it's, it, I like when people dress up, too, but I like how relaxed you are, because you're on vacation. This is dressed up. You're take, this is dressed up for you? On vacation, it's dressed up. On vacation is? Well, yeah. what's not dressed up? Uh, just a pair of shorts. Uh-huh. All right, well, next time, uh, make yourself more comfortable. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, now what's, uh, I always am curious to see, uh, you know, like I said, I used to want to be, I want to work with animals in some way if I didn't do this. What were you studying to, to do if you weren't going to do this? Oh, if I weren't going to do this. Uh -huh. Interesting. No, I, I left school and I went to nursing school. Nursing? Mm -hmm. In Australia? <laughs> uh-huh. Well, that's not funny. That's a good profession. It was very funny. Why? Are you a bad nurse? <laughs> Because, uh, you know, uh, I, I just, you know, it's a really bad choice for me. Why is that? Because I just can't stand complaining. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Did you even get that far to, to listen to people complain? Oh, any hands-on stuff? Uh -huh. No. No. <laughs> Absolutely not. Uh-huh. <laughs> Only with other students. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not. <laughs> and how long did you go until you realized I can't do this? Oh, a whole three months. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I really you, gave it a good you shot. You gave it a good shot, right? <laughs> yeah. That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> Big effort. All right, and but are you a good dad? I mean, you have to hear kids complain all the time. You have three kids, right? Yeah. And and yeah. what are they? Are, are they complainers? Um, well, they're kids. Yeah. 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 So, and are you a they patient? They try it on. You... <laughs> they try to complain. No. Are you they pretty do. patient with them? Um, I am at times, depending on what time of the day and mm -hmm. how often the complaining goes on. But, mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times kids have to realize that there's a choice not to complain. You know? Yes. So, uh... At the age of reasoning, they start figuring that out, I yeah, guess. Whatever, like, okay. whatever that is. But, I mean, so. I'm just realizing that I, I'm watching a gaping wound that you completely ignored, so you're a horrible <laughs> nurse. That you don't even take care of your own foot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I didn't do anything right. about that. We're gonna put a band-aid on it later. All right. It'll just come off. I just don't want well, because seriously, I may it's buy these one. clothes from you, so um, <laughs> I don't want anything to happen to them. I put calendula on it. Calendula? Calendula. How's she doing? <laughs> All right. I don't know what it is. All right. Uh, I loved having you here. You're so cheeky. Uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I don't know what that means. What does it mean? It's a, it's a you know, it's a, and it's a, it's a word used in Australia for someone that is precocious and uh, uh -huh. sort of a little bit naughty, but naughty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I don't know. No, a little bit yeah. naughty, nice, like, you yes. know, cheeky. Yes, call me Mr. Generous. So, All right. Yes. Uh, Never stop with you. <laughs> you do it all. You're so hilarious. We, I was at a at some thing at a opening at something at Kathy and Jimmy's oh, yeah. uh, thing, and I'm in the middle of doing an interview with with like Access Hollywood or something, and the camera's here, and the guys ask me a question. I'm here. She immediately right between us goes, excuse me, and walks between the camera and me. <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> you laugh. I do that at a party when there's like no one there and there's two people that are standing really close together. I go in between and say, excuse me, great party. <laughs> like, that's hilarious. <laughs> I'm gonna steal that now. You got it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> All right, so now you just got back from China, is that right? Yeah. I was, I was in Shanghai for about uh, a week and then another week I was in Shanghai is just like Manhattan, though. You know, it's very busy and everything. But I really wanted to go somewhere where it was like the kind of China I thought of when, you know, when you're a kid growing up. Uh -huh. So we filmed in this small town called Jingxi. And, um, sure. Oh. <laughs> it was like untouched by time. It was what I had imagined, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and 
There was a man making shoes for people. You know, you just sit there and he takes this size right there on this cobblestone walkway and there's a canal where a woman was doing her wash by the canal and hitting it with a stick, you know. And I'm watching this and I'm just thinking, oh my gosh, I, this is like a moment frozen in time. And then her cell phone rings. <laughs> She's talking to. I, that's what I was thinking. It's like, hey, you almost done with the wash? Oh uh, yeah, just put it down here on the rinse cycle, smartass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. I'll be right home. <laughs> I'm just gonna go to the gym. Yeah. I, it always cracks me up. I was at, at dinner the other night, and outside of a restaurant, there's like a ten-year-old girl on a cell phone, like just chatting on the cell phone. That's. I mean, I love when a kid does this. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I had to use the ask if I could use the phone. Once I have a cell phone that I could just be talking on. It was crazy. I know. So, all right, so you come home and uh, and where do you live? In this area? I yes. Know. Yeah. Like, I live very like ten minutes from here. But it's what's fine, the exact address? <laughs> <laughs> all right, well I come home and my neighbor calls me and she said, Sherry, I don't know if you know it, but there's a really scary swarm of bees above your house. And I knew that I had bees, you know, but I if you leave them alone, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, when you have neighbors calling, like, they're worried for their animals or whatever. Yeah. So I thought, okay, and I really let it go, so I called this bee man. And he came over, and he said, I think they're in your house. They're outside. So he went up into my guest room, and he said... They were staying in the guest room, at least. They were. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, Good. they were. Good. They were in the wall in the guest room, because he said... Because the wall started puckering out, and he said, here, put your hand here. And it was warm from the, he said, it's from the honey. And, you know, the honey produces moisture. And that's why the wall is puckering. And I said, well, what do we do? He goes, we have to take down the wall and get the honey out. And I said, no, no. And he's like, yeah. So. <laughs> and then what'd you say? <laughs> You're taking me for a ride. <laughs> you know? So then they come back. They take the wall down. And I'm hearing all those noises, and he says, Sherry, I want you to come up and see this. So I go up, and I, I look, and he said, look. And the wall was down. I go, what, are they behind the wiring? And he goes, that's not wiring. They're honeycombs. How big was it? Oh, my God. It was like, it was like six feet of wall. And I said, no, honeycombs is a cereal. <laughs> it's fictitious. It's a cereal. There's no such thing as honeycomb. And it was, and he took out three... Where, where are the bees that you're not that you're able to stand there and look at that? Where were the bees? They weren't in there. <laughs> they were all. No, gone I'm going to tell once? you something, Ellen. What happened was, he said he knew that that people were coming in. He, this is what he said to me. He said, "Put your ear up against the wall." The day before, when I felt the wall, and, um, and I didn't. He said, "You now listen," and I hear, and I said, "What's that?" And he said, "That's the queen warning that there's trouble." I'm like. How big is she? She's barking. <laughs> the queen was barking. <laughs> so, so the queen's in trouble and they stay away? Shouldn't they come no, no, in? No, no, they, they knew to, you know, because when they were taken down the wall, they knew to get out. So what they do is they have to remove the honey or else the bees will come back or you'll get termites. So this honey seriously was dripping out of my walls. Just, it was really, really something so neat to see. Wow. So... <laughs> No, I saw it. It's, it's, it, I, I asked what that was. Fresh from my wall. Uh -huh. <laughs> well. <laughs> and the stuff down here, I suppose, is asbestos, or what is the... Uh... <laughs> Don't worry about that. That'll, All right. That'll just clean you out. All right. <laughs> we have to take a commercial. Uh, we'll be right back. That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, the hilarious Sherry O'Terry. You make me laugh so hard. You really do. You're so funny. And I loved you on Saturday Night Live. I miss you like crazy on Saturday Night Live. Thank you. You had some of the best characters. Oh. What was the name? This, this character was hilarious. What was the name of this character? <laughs> that was... <laughs> that was Colette Reardon. Uh -huh. uh, she was um, my prescription drug lady. I was getting the refills at the pharmacy. Uh-huh. She was kind of loosely based on um, my Nana. 
And back then in the 70s, like, you know, you just, if, if, you were, if something was prescribed by a doctor, it was word, you know, it didn't matter who had you on what, and everybody had different doctors. When I, when, it's so funny, because when I was little, I mean, half her makeup be on, you know, she, <laughs> I figured she'd get the other half later or something. <laughs> And, it's like down the face. Right. Like that. It's like, oh, I'll get that later. Um, but she would come over to the house and I would say, Nana, can I see your pillbox? And because she had the most beautiful bejeweled pillbox. Like back then, cigarettes were like, she would have her cigarettes in a stra uh, sterling silver case and with the matching flask for the coffee table. <laughs> it was a set. All she needed was the gun rack. <laughs> and so, I, so she would take it out and I would touch it and then I'd say, can you tell me what they are for again? So she'd open it up like story time and she would say, that one's for nerves. The pink ones um, are for uh, water weight, which is all this is. <laughs> she always said that's, that's all it is. The red, well, if that damn breaks, I'll move. <laughs> and she goes, this one's, um, <laughs> she would say, this one's um, just for pep. Just for pep. <laughs> Little pep, no one gets hurt. Right. And this is to help me sleep after all the pain. That's <laughs> great. You're hilarious. Thanks for being here. You're oh, so funny. So, so um, much pleasure. And uh, Sherry O'Terry, everybody. Uh, the big finish is next. Don't go anywhere. Do Don't. Not.